Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back to another session of our series Morning Reflections on the 99 Names of Allah. Inshallah, today is our 21st session and we'll be covering the names of Al Jamil, Al Wadud, and Al Ghani, uh, names that have the meanings of beauty, love, and self sufficiency. So, inshallah, to begin with Al Jamil or the beautiful. Uh, so there's a famous hadith Prophet that says, Allah is beautiful and loves beauty. Uh, and this beauty is something that has so many different meanings and it's quite subjective, honestly, to many people uh, as we hear in the famous adage that beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Um, you know, beauty can be perceived through our sight uh, when we see what we regard as beautiful in the world around us, but it can also be felt in the heart. Uh, when someone uh, engages us, you know, in, in a very thoughtful and uh, nice manner and, and a very heartfelt manner, it can be engaged through beautiful attributes, um, these mannerisms, actions, uh, and also in just the everyday interactions we may have uh, that, that go beyond just the surface level conversation and really touch us in the heart. Um, so this beauty is all encompassing. And as a result, it's also uh, very similar in a sense, or at least when we conceive upon or we think upon uh, Allah's uh, beauty that's not just limited to a physical sense, it is it is that which is all-encompassing, it's the source of beauty. Uh, and so as Al-Jami of Allah uh, is the beautiful, and in knowing this name, we know that Allah is beautiful in not just essence, but also in all the names of Allah, the attributes of Allah, and in all of the actions of Allah, including, including the creation uh, of humanity, the creation of all uh, that is uh, created. Uh, Imam Ibn al-Qayyim says that it is enough to realize Allah's beauty when we know that every internal and external beauty in this life and the next are created by him. So what does that say about his beauty? When we look at the world around us and we see you know, some of the most beautiful sights that we say we've seen in our lives, that this is the most beautiful thing we've ever seen, um, or we're just, you know, completely uh, awestruck by it, like our, our jaws drop in a sense. Uh, and just to remember that if this is the beauty that we're seeing all around here, um, what does that say? What does that tell us about the beauty that awaits with Allah uh, and that, that is to come in the life after? So we want to reflect on the beauty um, that we attribute to the creation and the world, not to get focused so much on that, uh, but to absolutely admire it. In, in, in a respectful way, but not to get focused on that to where this is the center of attention or the object of our desire, but to remember that this all came from the same source. And that source is Allah, who is Al Jamil, who is the beautiful. And from Allah came beauty. Uh, so recognizing this, these, sh these should all be, as we've talked about in the past, the, everything in this world should be a sign pointing to Allah and the different attributes of Allah uh, and pointing us back to remember Allah. And in the things in this world that are beautiful, we are pointed back towards Allah to remind ourselves that um, regardless of the beauty that is ca captured in this uh, entity, in this, in this uh, you know, world, that this is from Allah, who is the, the vastly beautiful, the most beautiful, the source of beauty. And we give thanks to Allah for that, um, for that experience. And then uh, this beauty should ultimately help us strengthen that connection, strengthen that connection with Allah. Uh, and increase our love for Allah and to desire that, that, to increase that desire to long to return. Oftentimes when we see something that is beautiful, when we, uh, you know, find someone that is, uh, that's beautiful to us or we attribute as beautiful or come to a place or a land that is very beautiful, we get really uh, enamored with it. We, we, we sometimes to unhealthy degrees become dependent on that or inf get, become infatuated with it. Uh, and what the, this beauty should al actually do when we see it from a God conscious lens is to ultimately help us strengthen our connection with Allah because we recognize that regardless of the level of beauty that we're seeing here, this is a uh, direct sign for Allah's beauty um, and a source, uh, a, a result of Allah's creation um, that was done out of beauty. And to remind us that from Allah came all of this beauty uh, and that in and of itself, uh, it, it does not have that value, but from Allah, it has uh, that attributed value. So for us to think about that uh, in this respect. And so when we remember this name, uh, we also want to lift up our own self-worth sometimes as humans, uh, especially folks who are uh, who have been marginalized and pushed to the side, whose self-worth has been stripped of them. Um, we're sometimes told that you know we're, we're not beautiful 
human beings because of the color of our skin, because of how we look, we don't fit in with the rest of the people. Our abilities might be different. We may have different mental faculties or whatnot, but to remember that you were created by Al Jamil. You were created by the one who is the beautiful, who loves beauty. Um, so remember that as a creation of beauty, you inherently are beautiful um, in the sight of Allah, uh, because Allah created you, um, regardless of the standards that the world throws up there. Uh, we want to focus on being beautiful to Allah. Uh, so, you know, that that includes not, that's not just the outward beauty and getting the best clothes or anything like that, or, you know, making our self cosmetically look like we're, we're uh, beautiful according to society's capricious standards, but to focus on being beautiful to Allah as Allah loves, that uh, we emanate beauty from within us. Uh, and we are, we are reminders to other people of Allah's beauty, uh, not just on the outside, but the inside. We want to reflect the beauty uh, of this, uh, reflect on the beauty of this world uh, and see how that points us back to Allah. But similarly, as we are creations of beauty, created out of beauty, created from beauty, created for beauty, we are to be agents of Al Jamil and to beautify the world around us, whether that's beautifying um, our homes, whether that's beautifying the relationships with our family and our loved ones, if it's beautifying the environment, or if it's just beautifying our own character, we are called to be agents of beauty and to live into that. Shall the next one, the next name is Al Wadud. Uh, Al Wadud has the root meanings uh, of love and the expression and manifesting of love, showing love externally, um, that's in one's heart, uh, and to telling, uh, and, and this name tells us that Allah is not just a loving God, or that Allah is loving, but Allah expresses that love to those who worship Allah, that Allah expresses the love to the creation, it shows this love. Um, and there's a very famous hadith of how uh, Allah's love really is expressed to those who draw close to Allah. It's a hadith Qudsi in which the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam relates that Allah says that when a servant draws near to me, I draw, uh, I, I love them and I, I, I am their hearing with which they hear, their seeing with which they see, their hand with which they strike, their foot with which they walk. And were they to ask me of something, I would surely give it to them. And were they to ask me for refuge, I would surely give it to them. So seeing that Allah's love is not just one that's bottled up here, and that's just, you know, put away and we can never access it. Allah's love is a love in motion and a love in action. Uh, and that when Allah loves a person, uh, it, it becomes something very enveloping. It's becomes something very uh, empowering in a sense. And so uh, what, what we want to see is that Allah is, is capable and able to do this and does this, expresses that love. And creation in and of itself was an act of love. Uh, but to continue to access that love, there are certain things that we have to do as well to be able to be recipients of it. But that access to that love, that doorway is always open for folks, uh, whether they're sinners or they're saints, they're able to still access that. Um, Allah's love is expressed um, in so many different ways, so many different ways, but in certain ways by giving knowledge to those who are seeking knowledge, by opening doors of opportunity for those who are seeking it, by uh, extending forgiveness and repentance uh, and pardon to those who are sinners and, and lost on the way um, for all of creation through various provision and blessing and just the sustaining of life these all of these things that we can count and so many more and we probably can't count there we can't enumerate the blessings of Allah but to be able to think about all the ways that Allah shows love and expresses love not just shows love but expresses love for the creation and this also shows that uh, we are beloved to Allah as a creation and so to think that uh, Allah does not want anything to do with us or that Allah hates us or that Allah wants the worst for us is absolutely not true. Is that Allah actually wants us to do well. Allah created us out of love um, and there's a loving relationship that's there, not one that is solely, uh, you know, sometimes perceived as like kind of a fire and brimstone uh, fear-based relationship. There's genuine love that is, that is there. And so, uh, you know, Allah not only uh, loves in this action in this way, but Allah loves to show mercy. Allah loves to show forgiveness. Allah loves the showing of justice and all these things and loves those who do so as well. Allah also places the love that is in between the hearts of two souls that come together, two spouses that come together. We see that uh, in the uh, in the Quran, and oftentimes we see it in nikah ceremonies and marriage ceremonies that uh, we see the reading of verses that say that Allah has placed you know, between you, uh, love and mercy and tranquility uh, and all of these things to, to kind of inculcate that Allah's concern for the creatures, concern for that which Allah has created is also concerned with them individually. So that this concept of love as we know it, 
true genuine love uh, is from Allah as well, the love that we feel to those whom we love. Uh, and we, we, these are reminders for us as well. Sometimes we get focused on the object of love and think that this is the only source of that love, but it should be a reminder for us, just like the beautiful mountains or the beautiful countrysides remind us of Allah's beauty. Similarly, the beautiful people in our lives, the people who we love in our lives the most, the people who are most uh, loved by us and most who we love, um, are reminders of us of Allah's love for us. And so Allah's love for us, as we mentioned, is always open, um, but some level of action is required to at least go towards Allah, not only uh, for this to, to get to the open access for love, but to be and aspire to those whom Allah distinguishes in Allah's love, uh, the patient, the doers of good, the mindful, the just, uh, the ones who return to Allah, the ones who trust, all the ones who Allah lifts in the Quran, that Allah loves these people. Um, we aspire to be in that aspect. And so at the end of the day, Allah, as with beauty, Allah should be the object of our love. And so we live out these names by loving Allah, uh, by doing what Allah loves, uh, doing good to those around him, by worshiping Allah. How do we worship Allah? It's not just on the prayer mat. Worshiping Allah is uh, connecting to the world around us, is helping those around us, is being present to the world around us, being present to ourselves, taking care of our families, feeding the hungry, giving smiles to, uh, to strangers and, and to, to, to make people feel welcome, giving charity in that aspect, doing all of these different things, just being good people uh, is, is living into that. So, uh, and another aspect of that love is to follow the Prophet Sallallahu who was sent as rahmat alameen, as a mercy to all creation. And this mercy was not anything but a loving mercy, an act of love that was bestowed, an act of mercy that was given um, to humanity. And so as a result, we follow and reciprocate that love. We love one another as humans, as uh, and we love for ourselves, for love, love for others, what we love for ourselves. Uh, and additionally, because Allah expresses love, because Allah is al wadud and gives that love freely and expresses that love, we too should be people who express that love as well. We shouldn't be people who, uh, you know, kind of uh, create boundaries, like uh, in, in a sense of uh, putting up barriers between other people, between, you know, because they're different or whatnot. We should be people who express uh, love to other folks uh, as a sign of Allah's love. Um, that we, that uh, there's a famous saying of Imam Ali that says, if a person is not your, uh, your sibling in, in faith, they are your sibling in humanity. So we recognize that by showing basic love to fellow creation, to our humans, to the environment and express that love uh, for all the world around uh, as a, uh, in, in the spirit that Allah has created us in, uh, of al-wadud and, and creating us in that, in that, uh, space of love and expressing love and to aspire to be and try to be those whom Allah has lifted up that Allah loves. And lastly, we have the name of Al-Ghani, who is the self-sufficient, the needless, the rich, and has no need for anyone, despite being the one that still bestows upon us bounties, accepts our return, um, and wants us to come back to him, even in state of uh, sin, that we turn back to Allah, that uh, Al-Ghani um, is the one that, that is self-sufficient, but is not in need of any of this, yet wants to continue to do this, is, is enriching us so that we may also be enriched. And so we realize uh, in this name that Allah is not in need of us, is not in even need of our worship, of our pillars of faith, is not in need of that. But at the end of the day, these are things that we need. Uh, and that we are in need of Allah uh, through these things. And so we might not realize how much uh, we need Allah uh, until we see the voids in our life start to open up. And Ramadan is a really important time for this that we recognize when we abstain from that which we think we need physically to nourish ourselves, when we abstain from that content that we think we need to consume to, con uh, to, to gratify ourselves or that we need to um, you know, think certain thoughts or do certain things to, to continue to keep us going. When we free ourselves from that, especially in Ramadan, we see that we actually don't need these things. We are actually sufficient without them. And that Allah, when Allah fills these, these, these voids, when we fill that space with whether it's prayer, fasting, um, or just being uh, God conscious in those spaces, that that satisfies those needs that we would have otherwise attributed or become independent on for, uh, you know, for our own sustenance. So being able to see that uh, in our life. And so we recognize that uh, Allah, when we recognize that Allah is al-Ghani, 
Um, we, it should be something that humbles us. It should rely, it should um, make us realize that we are truly dependent on Allah while Allah is independent. And it should cause us to turn to Allah for all of our needs that, hey, if during this moment of void, Allah came and sufficed for my needs and provided, what about the other things that I need in my life? Um, and so knowing this name can also then in turn help and enrich our relationship with others. We don't have to become fully dependent on other people for certain things. We can recognize that certain people have, everybody else has their own needs. They have obligations. They have to take care of certain things as well. Uh, and then to be mindful of our own needs, that there are certain things that uh, we can just rely on Allah for, we should rely on Allah for, and not become overtly dependent on someone else for. Uh, this doesn't mean that when we get sick, we don't go to the doctor or when we, uh, you know, get uh, like we have a psychological illness or we're going through some kind of trauma that we don't go to a therapist or go to a mental health professional. No, this is what we, we should absolutely go. These are these are blessings of Allah that have been provided to us and we should go and take advantage of that. Um, but if we are just completely dependent on certain individuals or, or you know, becoming dependent there, we, wanna, we want to, out of respect for that person and respect for ourselves, uh, be able to take that step back and give that respect due to Allah because Allah is the one who's free of need yet is the one who's ready to give at any moment. And so now when we live with these names, we want to recognize the need for Allah in our lives. We want to understand that others have needs as well and to respect those boundaries. Uh, we want to know that Allah, because Allah is the one free of needs, we want to occupy ourselves with, uh, with Allah in our life and occupy ourselves with Allah's worship. Because when we occupy uh, with, uh, with our, 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 when we are occupied with that which is in this world, it shows that we are attributing a need to it. Uh, but when we occupy ourselves with Allah's worship, we see that we have a need for it and we have a need for Allah. And when I say worship of Allah, again, it's not that that solely just happens on a prayer mat. The worship of Allah, as you can see in the pillars of faith, uh, are, are, are those which not just cause us to go into a state of salah, but it's, it, acts, it causes us to go um, help the community around us by being charitable human beings, by being those who bring about justice, by being those who bring about equity, alleviate the world around us, uh, by being those who strive, uh, by being those who take action in other spaces, by being kind to people, by keeping ties of kinship, by doing all these different things are our acts of worship. And uh, for those who are not able to engage in these acts of worship, if you're not able to pray for some reason uh, for a certain time, if you're not able to fast for some period for a certain time or forever, um, you know, there's all these different ways that you can continue to worship Allah, even though that's not the case uh, if you're not able to do so. So being able to see that that worship is something that is holistic. And uh, when we worship, occupy ourselves with worship with Allah, it essentially makes us occupy our, all of our actions in a sense of God consciousness. So we ask Allah to allow us to not just become sufficient uh, in our own ways, but to become fully dependent on Allah for all things, uh, that we turn our uh, needs and our desires to Allah uh, as al-Ghani, uh, to who can help uh, enrich us, that we ask Allah to do this and to continue to make our path, make our return back to Allah uh, through a lens of al-wadud, of love, and uh, of al-jamil, of, al of beauty. Uh, so we return to Allah uh, in a world and a sense of beauty and appreciation, and that Allah beautifies for us, not just the world around us, but beautifies our hearts, beautifies our actions, beautifies our thoughts, and beautifies in these last 10 days of Ramadan our efforts. And similarly, that Allah uh, loves and expresses that love for us as we try, that we come close to Allah. We ask Allah to allow us to uh, draw close to him and to draw close to us, uh, to love us, to become our hearing with which we hear and the seeing with which we see and so much more. So inshallah, until next time uh, for the next uh, uh, session, inshallah, we'll go from there. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.